Hey everybody, Rich Basil here. I wanted to show you one of my favorite flies that's been catching a lot of fish here recently. Uh, we are in North Carolina. We fish a lot of delayed harvest rivers, but we also fish over in Tennessee on some of the bigger waters, the, the uh, tail race rivers over there. Um, so I've been fishing a lot of soft hackle flies and um, been trying all different designs and this is one that I've come up with that really seems to work pretty well. Uh, this is a, a soft tackle that's got a, a big copper bead head, um, got a little hot spot on it, uh, of course the soft tackles, but the, the, the body is what's really cool. This is actually a clear um, wrapped body, uh, and I'll show you what we're going to do in order to create that clear wrap, but it really looks great in the water, kind of translucent almost, has this really cool appearance, pretty easy to tie you know, once you kind of get the hang of it. So I'll walk through the steps for you here. Um, we're going to tie this on a uh, size uh, 14 hook and we're going to be using a um, 3.5 millimeter medium coffee slotted tungsten. So that's going to be the bead that we're using slotted tungsten bead and we'll get this on our vise and get started all right so we'll load it up here and i'm using this mainly for uh, euro nymphing so i'm going to put some extra lead wire that is a tungsten bead it's pretty heavy but we're going to take some lead wire, some 0 0.1 um, lead wire, and we're going to wrap this. But I like to start, no, normally I'm right-handed, so I wrap most things clockwise if you're looking at the, at the fly from the front. But I'm going to start wrapping this counterclockwise. And the reason for that is once you start putting your thread on, the thread will actually help hold that better against the front of the fly. So we're going to put about 10 wraps on there. Try and break this off really closely with my fingertips. And then we're going to use this lead wrap to kind of sit inside that, push that lead down inside the bead itself. And I'm just using this to kind of point. So it kind of jams that bead up in there. Then in the line of the thread we're going to use, and you can use any kind of thread, uh, but I like the, the colors the, because we're using a clear uh, wrap on top. Anything translucent or fluorescent really kind of looks good. So fluorescent green, this is a fluorescent uh, yellow UTC 70 uh, that I use. And again, so I wrapped the um, lead wire uh, kind of under to over, so I'm going to start this over to under and we're going to build up a little bit of a dam right behind the lead wire and then we'll just kind of wrap over the top of the red lead wire and if you do it that way the lead wire doesn't try and unravel as you're wrapping. We'll come back down along the body trim off our waist and I'm going to come down here part way down the bend of the hook and kind of just come back a little bit. Doesn't have to be real fancy here. Then we're going to take some um, Corp de Lyon uh, tail feathers. This is in a kind of a light brown. I like the little segmented tail feathers that this creates. And we'll grab a bunch off this. And we're going to use that to create our tail on this fly. I probably grab about eight or ten of these feathers for this tail. And we're going to set them right. And there's one that's a little long. Let's see if I can match that up a little bit better. So we're going to set it right there along the back, and I like it about the length of the the hook itself from the um, bend back to the tip. Now we'll do a loose wrap just to kind of get it started on there. 
position it up on top and then just tie back and I tie back all the way to the t to the tail and I like it to flare a little bit like that so that's about right and then I'll come back and I'll get rid of this waste so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some this is really great stuff uh, this is uh, the um, bead wire that they sell at craft stores. You can buy a gigantic spool of it like this for about $2 uh, and it's one millimeter and it's round so it's not like the half round stuff that you buy uh, that you normally buy like uh, the, the vinyl ribbing that's that's kind of half round. Uh, you can get this in clear but this stuff's really cheap and you can make a ton of flies out of it. So we're going to cut off a piece and we're going to tie this in, but first thing we need to do is we need to, right now it's cut off square, and I'm going to kind of come in and, and cut off at an angle. And you can do this lots of different ways. You can do this with scissors, you can do it with a razor blade, but the idea is to create a little bit of a ramp so that when we tie this in, you can I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of a ramp there. And I'm just going to catch that right, right behind where that um, the lead wire was, so that I don't create a huge divot that I have to fill later on. We're just going to wrap that in. And by the way, this stuff is really stretchy, and so you can actually put some stretch on it in order to decrease the bulk of the fly. So as I'm tying, I'm pulling back on this and making it thinner. And I'm actually tying it off to my side a little bit as I come down towards the tail here. And the reason is we're going to tie in some little black underbody in just a second. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some stretch micro black tubing. And this is by Waspy. Or Wapsy, sorry. And we'll cut off a little piece. And again, we're going to start tying this in just right near the head of the fly. Get it up on top. And again, not too critical how you tie this in up top. But then we're going to lift up and we're going to come back underneath. And you can do this kind of quick. But you want to kind of wrap all the way down to the tail of the fly again. And get a little bit behind that original clear tubing. And we're going to just pull it down and make kind of two wraps down here. I've tried all different ways of doing this, but I found that this kind of works the best. So I'm going to put two wraps on there, give it a little stretch, and that will kind of lock it down in place for me. And then I'm going to not wrap tight but wraps, but just for some really big wraps coming forward so I don't cover that black with much thread at all. All right, and then at this point, actually, it sometimes helps to throw a quick little whip finish in because we're going to be really pulling hard on this, and I don't want to have to worry about this thread. So the next thing we're going to do is pull on this um, tubing, pull a pretty good amount, and then start wrapping. And again, I can use my rotary feature. You can do it by hand but we're going to wrap all the way up towards the head touching wraps and I kind of stop just a little bit short of the head let's see I gotta wrap it from the rotary feature there I kind of unwrapped my line a little bit so now we're going to tie this in real tight here, real quick. Woo. This is really the only tricky part, just to kind of capture that tubing so it doesn't unravel when you cut it. And I like to make three or four of these kind of wraps, kind of really pulling down on that tubing and 
wrapping up there kind of on both sides. Okay. So I think that should stay now and I'll cut this tubing off close and hopefully it doesn't unravel. Now I don't know if you can see but that translucent or clear tubing that black underneath just really shines through there. It glows almost. Uh, and then we're going to now take this micro tubing and again I don't do this with the rotary feature but I kind of pull it reasonably tight and what I want to do is start wrapping right in those in those grooves that I created. I went the wrong way. Alright, so I gotta go this way. And we're gonna actually go right into those grooves and it creates some segmentation. That's really kind of cool. Alright, so we'll tie this off. Make sure that doesn't unravel on me. Got to tighten up my spool a little bit here. Alright, so the next step is to take some ice dubbing, and this is uh, Peacock Ice Dubbing. It's uh, by Hairline. I like this ice dubbing. use it for a lot of my flies. It, it creates a lot of nice flash. And we're just going to take a little bit of this as everybody always says, a little bit goes a long way. And we're going to dub this on and create a little bit of a, of a body. All right. So we're just going to come right behind this bead. I'm trying to give it just a little bit of room because we're going to be putting that soft tackle on up front. And don't worry about these long little fibers here. We're going to trim those off in just a second. So at this point I'm actually going to whip finish this down and then we'll trim off those little hairs, those flyers. And I put about three whip finishes in there, something like that. Pull it tight. Because I want to sink that thread down behind that bead as much as possible. Then we're going to get rid of a lot of these little flyers that are on here because that ice dubbing is really long. You can leave a few long ones. I actually kind of like the sparkle that it creates. So the next thing, um, I'm going to take a feather and uh, use. you can use any of your partridge feathers for this. This actually happens to be uh, feathers from a um, pheasant, male pheasant that we shot the other day and uh, going to be using just the feathers right off the neck we'll create a little soft tackle from this. So I'm going to strip away the bottom part and that's kind of be where we're going to start with and then we'll create a little nubbing that we can tie in. And what I do is I just pull back on the feathers holding the very tip so that I have a, a little tip that I can tie in. So that's going to be kind of where we're going to be. Um, and we'll be tying this in. I love the, the segmentation on that feather. But I want to create a little hot spot here when we're, when we're done. So I'm actually now going to switch to a pink thread. And this is a fluorescent pink UTC Ultra 70. And again, we're going to skim you right behind this head. And we're just going to use this pink thread then to tie in our soft tackle. And you want to kind of, again, cinch it in tight so that it uh, doesn't unravel on you and also so that this, the soft hackle has a little place to be seated down behind. All right, then the real tricky part is to tie in this feather. I'm just going to come right behind there and give it about two wraps. Snug it really tight. And you can then cut off these little flyer ends. I always leave a little bit just because I'm afraid that it's going to fly off when I start wrapping. So make sure it's kind of tight. Take your hackle pliers, and grab your stem, and then 
and just start doing a kind of a rotating vertical wrap as we go around here and just kind of brush those little feathers back as you go and you want to do at least one full rotation around if you can and again then we'll tie this in that didn't quite do the way I wanted it to I'm going to start that again get me another partridge feather or in this case peacock feather maybe get one that's a little bit longer that was a little stubby alright let's try that again get rid of all our waste So you can see, even though I do quite a few of these every now and then, you just kind of get one that just doesn't behave, and you got to do it again. All right, so let's try this one more time. Tie in our little stem. Give it about two or three good wraps. Clip off our little waist. And grab our hackle pliers. And then you can, some people kind of squeeze the feather and fold it back so that it lays better as you wrap. I didn't do that last time, but these, these feathers tend not to be, they, they tend to stick a little bit together until you actually do your soft hackle all the way around once and then it tends to behave a little bit better except for today there we go and just kind of brush it back as you go Once you get your feathers wrapped around once, then you can kind of come in around that stem. I'll get rid of this for now. Trim this off. And I want to create a little bit of a hot spot here. So I'm going to do several wraps just to create that hot spot maybe one or two more and then we're gonna whip finish and we're pretty much done so then you can kinda of come in with your fingers and spread those little fibers around a little bit if you use um, Regular partridge feathers, Hungarian partridge feathers, they, t they tend to be a little bit more wispy and, and stay and they, they spread out as you rotate around the fly. Um, but with the pheasant, it's a little, they're a little bit more sticky and they stick to each other. But once you get them spread out, it actually creates a really good looking fly. I like the feathers to be about the same length as the hook um, and that way it kind of wraps back. Um, but I'm going to pull this back here a little bit. So you can kind of see what that body kind of looks like now and I don't know if you can see so you can see that body how, how cool it looks and one of the things now some people believe in UV other people don't but if you take a UV light and shine it on here so you can see kind of in, a, in the daytime what that body would look like and do and with that hot spot on there it really really glows let me maybe come this way and show you see if that body really glows has a really cool appearance in the water uh, really attracts the fish uh, that fluorescent pink hotspot really helps too 
Uh, so this has actually been a great fly for me. It's pretty, it's a very fluffy fly, so you have to put a big bead on the head. You can't use something small. Um, you can tie this now. Uh, this was tied on a, a size 14 hook. You can tie it smaller, but really then the the the, um, the, the clear uh, bead uh, rope that we use um, it, it's almost too big. So you almost have to go with a 14 uh, as, as about the smallest. You can go to a 12, of course, uh, but this. Uh, fish is great when I do my urine nymphing. I drop a smaller fly off the bottom of this. This is my upper fly and uh, really catch a lot of fish on this. Um, so hope you guys enjoy that uh, and uh, give it a try and see. But uh, that that clear tubing is really kind of cool to use incorporated into your into your fishing uh, and fly tying. Thanks.